Welcome to FRC Media News for Thursday, August 15, 2019. I'm Keith Thibault. On tonight's show, we give you an update on the Crestbrook drainage project here in the north end of Fall River. We still have warnings about mosquito-borne diseases in southeastern Massachusetts, and we look ahead at more activities at Heritage State Park. But first, let's check in with the news headlines of the week. We bring in Phil Devitt, the digital news editor at the Herald News. Phil, how are you? I'm doing fine, Keith. It's been an interesting, busy week, hasn't it? Well, it always has been, and a lot of times, you know, we, we've talked a lot about politics in Fall River, I guess, as in many communities, it's a spectator sport, and a lot of people actually had a chance to uh, take part in that, uh, in, in that uh, endeavor this week, as um, we've known for quite a, a long time now that uh, Mayor Jaysia Correa and members of the City Council have not really gotten along uh, too well over the past couple of years, particularly since uh, the mayor's indictment last fall. And this week there was a little bit of uh, activity at the city council meeting where uh, the um, city administration was answering some questions from the city councilors and the mayor decided to join in. So tell us what happened. Yeah, Keith, you know, this was a, a long meeting, maybe not the longest in city council history, but whether you were watching it here on television or online or in person, it, it was a long one, and, and a few news items uh, came out of it that we've been uh, exploring this week. But far and away, the biggest story was the interaction uh, between some members of the city council and the mayor, uh, uh, Correa's unannounced appearance in city council chambers, uh, followed uh, a lengthy discussion, as you said, Keith, on the uh, streetscape project mm -hmm. on Purchase and East Main Streets, um, mainly the city council expressing uh, some frustrations with those projects um, over costs, um, you know, accusations of incomplete work, uh, things like that. So Correa later said that he uh, came into the room because he wanted to set the record straight, calling it his right. Um, uh, you know, and, and inform the public from his perspective on these projects. But right away, uh, President Cliff Ponty of the City Council uh, acknowledged and uh, inquired about the mayor's uh, appearance in the room. He called for decorum. He asked the mayor to leave. Uh, the mayor refused. Uh, Ponty later referring to uh, the mayor's appearance uh, in the room and his refusal as a circus, calling the mayor stubborn. And, of course, uh, another city councilor, Sean Kadim, who... Uh, is a political adversary of the mayor, and uh, you might remember recently accused Correa of accepting, uh, to use his word, kickbacks from the marijuana industry, yeah. uh, was also very vocal about the mayor's appearance in the chambers. Um, he earlier referred to the streetscape project as a failure, not mincing words, and um, even alluded to uh, the mayor's uh, arrest last year in the presence of the mayor, saying that, you know, he's accustomed to being arrested, suggesting that police might uh, have to remove the mayor if he refused to leave the room. Um, you know, so Korea, of course, uh, is expected to go to trial in February on, mm -hmm. on wire and tax fraud charges. Um, some, you know, later kind of looking at this and saying this is not a good look for the mayor, but, you know, we're also hearing from, uh, you, you know, people in our audience who were frustrated with the city council and the, right. the remarks of some members in that public forum. Um, so this whole streetscape thing, which uh, is what this, portion of the meeting was about, um, and whether or not future projects should be canceled, well, that was postponed, and discussion has now been moved to a September meeting of the Council, Keith. Yeah, one of the things that I think um, has actually been um, sort of a negative here is you've got uh, sides that support the mayor that's saying that he was treated unfairly by the City Council. You've got those who are, you know, opponents of the mayor who say that the mayor was trying to impose his will uh, in a meeting that he was not invited to. Uh, the City Council does have rules in terms of who can speak and who cannot speak. They are a separate governmental entity, uh, also elected by the people, as the mayor is. And um, it, just, it just looked bad in terms of um, the city's image. Um, you know, you wrote about it in the Herald. There's been other right. uh, papers across Massachusetts that continue to, to that wrote about this, to, that again, kind of paints the city in a, in a negative light. And um, that's all not good for the city when it tries to move forward. So I think that's the, my opinion, the sad thing about this entire incident is that, um, again, the city is being reported on not by what's happening in terms of its policies within the city, but in terms of its politics within the city. And that's, um, that's, that's pretty sad in some, some ways. 
Uh, I agree with you, Keith. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, um, you know, no matter which side you fall on, you know, there's, uh, there's some clear lines in the sand here. If you're a supporter of the mayor, not a supporter of the mayor, um, you know, whether you side with the city council or the mayor on this one, uh, it's just not a good look for the city. Absolutely. So just basically what had happened was the council was talking about the streetscapes um, uh, um, project. Um, you yeah. had reported, the Herald had reported that, uh, in fact, it looks like there's some cost overruns uh, for streetscapes that needs to be addressed. And I think the council's had some questions about that. Um, ultimately, what had happened, as you mentioned, Phil, was that the council mm -hmm. uh, finance committee took a vote to, in effect, rescind the rest of the project and have that money go elsewhere. That uh, did not uh, eventually pass in the city council because of an objection by city councilor Steve Camara. So that will come up in the uh, next city council meeting, which will be sometime in September. Now, concurrent to that, on a separate issue, councilors were, were also still uh, concerned about the number of letters of non-opposition that the mayor have signed uh, for marijuana, recreational mar marijuana distribution and sales here in the city of, of, of Fall River. We talked about that last week on this program in terms of uh, some of the letters of non-opposition going to uh, people that are uh, related to, uh, in one instance, the uh, girlfriend of Mayor Correa and also former Mayor uh, Will Flanagan. The city council this week looked to uh, move to restrict the number of those licenses. The mayor has, um, has I believe, signed up to 14 uh, non-opposition letters where the city now, city council, wants to limit the number of licenses to 11. So, again, a little bit of politicking here as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you've been following mar marijuana news uh, in Fall River for any length of time, uh, this, you know, might not come as a surprise that we, we finally reached a day where we have uh, a city council approved cap uh, because it's been a long time coming. But uh, then again, you know, given how long we've been talking about it, maybe you thought it would never happen. Um, but it has happened this week, and that might be influenced by some of the recent developments that you uh, talked about there, Keith. Um, you know, Councillor Leo Pelletier in particular has been uh, vocal for the last several months about, um, you know, wanting to cap the number of recreational marijuana licenses. Originally, I think his first proposal was for eight, um, and we're now at 11, which is the, the official cap. Uh, and the decision comes less than a week, less than, yeah, seven days after the 12th, 13th, and uh, 14th uh, letters of non-opposition and host agreements um, were signed by the mayor, essentially uh, city approvals. Um, these, you know, still need to go on for state approval, obviously. But, uh, you know, two of those approvals were for a company run by the brother of the mayor's girlfriend. And we should note that it's the only um, marijuana company that has received two uh, approvals, essentially, right. and one for former Mayor Will Flanagan. Uh, and as I said, those approvals might have influenced the cap. At least one counselor, uh, Pamela uh, Liberty LeBeau, telling us that she changed her vote to a yes on the cap from a no right. because of those recent approvals, essentially um, you know, leaving a bad taste in her mouth, for, for lack of a better phrase. Um, the mayor, of course, has maintained that he's not trying to defy the city council by, uh, you know, giving all of these approvals. He said that plans um, for these uh, most recent three approvals had been in the works um, since long before the council had begun seriously discussing uh, a cap key. He didn't want to shut them out. Right. Something that's interesting um, um, in the story, a couple of things, actually one that was also reported um, in, the, in the paper this week is that uh, these two uh, letters of non-opposition to Mayor Correa's go the brother of Mayor Correa's girlfriend, there's actually going to be a public hearing on these next week at the Fall River Public Library next Wednesday, I believe. Uh, one will be held at 5 o'clock and one at 6.30 for the two, two proposals. So people will have uh, at least their input and be able to ask questions about the, uh, the uh, New Leaf Enterprises uh, proposal uh, for these two dispensaries. But uh, the other thing that is, that is interesting as well is um, whether the city does have jurisdiction in terms of limiting the number of licenses. I've heard from the mayor this week that he seems to believe that um, it's not a, a, a up for the city council to limit the number of licenses, that the state issues these licenses based on, on the merit. Do you have any insight as to whether the city council is actually lawful in making these restrictions? Well, that's uh, that's uh, that's the question, Keith. We, yeah. um, you know, I, I personally don't, but um, okay. Joe Good, who uh, has been on top of this from the beginning, along with 
um, I guess you could call him our marijuana reporter, uh, <laughs> Peter Jasinski, um, are, are looking into, uh, you know, sort of the, the fallout from this decision. And I'm sure that that will be a part of it. Certainly, uh, the mayor, it seems, can uh, issue as, as many um, letters of non-opposition and uh, sign as many host agreements as he would like. Um, whether or not the city council ends up having the end-all, be-all authority over that uh, remains to be seen, at least from our perspective here, but we're going to get back to you on that. Nice. And as far as these public hearings are concerned, uh, you know, there's a public hearing. Uh, this is part of the process for right. every uh, uh, marijuana business that that's, um, gets, gets city approval. And I was talking to uh, Peter Jasinski about this earlier today. He said that traditionally these meetings are not very well attended. Mm. Uh, so we're curious to see now, given the circumstances of this uh, particular approval, if that will change and if we'll have uh, a full house of people uh, ready to weigh in. Well, we'll have to wait and see next week. But uh, either way, uh, we know it's political season here in, in Fall River. So... Um, getting back to the strife between the mayor and the city council, we'll have to see how that all plays out between now and uh, the end of the year, or at least until Election Day in November. Finally, Phil, yeah. this week um, in Massachusetts, it's a tax-free holiday weekend coming up, something that the, the state has done um, on and off for, for quite a while. Um, initially, it got a lot of buzz when this first happened years ago. I forgot the year that uh, this uh, uh, first took place. but. An opportunity for people here in the Bay State to uh, take part in um, not paying the sales tax for for the weekend, and something that I guess has been very popular in helping the state's coffers in terms of raising raising some revenue. Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe that this dates back to 2004, but don't okay. don't hold yeah, me. Yeah, it could that. be that long. Uh, yeah, it could be. Time does fly. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a two-day break on, on retail taxes uh, in the state. So you, you, you look at that at base value and you think, gee, who can't get behind that? Uh, started under uh, Governor Romney, became something of a, tr a tradition here in the state. And now uh, it's permanent. The, the legislature made it a permanent uh, uh, fixture here uh, right. every August uh, last year. Um, you know, a good opportunity, obviously, to, to, to visit the local shops in particular, support local businesses. Right. Um, but uh, we should note that this only applies to items that are under $2,500 in value. Yeah, you can't buy any uh, cars with this. A, no cars. You can't buy cars. You can't buy uh, meals, boats, cigarettes, marijuana, alcohol, uh, according to a, a, a list I was just checking out uh, earlier today. So you might argue that that's all the fun stuff. But right. <laughs> there's other stuff that you can get, uh, you can get under that, too. And, uh, you know, so... What's the benefit of this? Uh, you know, I was uh, doing some reading on this earlier today, and, and the Boston Globe has a nice write-up on this, basically saying that proponents of the holiday say, you know, the millions of dollars lost to the state end up in the pockets of uh, Massachusetts uh, residents right. and consumers. And, of course, retailers on the other end love that it, it brings in business uh, typically in, in, in what's typically a slow month. Right. So. Well, I want to apologize. Yeah. I said that uh, more revenue for the state. It's actually the opposite. More revenue for local businesses who don't have to pay that sales tax to the state. So I wanted to qualify Correct. that. All right, Phil, what's coming up over the next few days? So uh, we just learned this week that uh, some holy relics uh, tied to uh, St. Anthony are making their way to Massachusetts at the end of this month. Uh, and they're going to make stops at uh, two Fall River churches, uh, mm -hmm. along with a host of other locations throughout Greater Fall River and the South Coast. Our Deborah Allard is putting together uh, a nice story on that that's uh, going to have a little more information on those relics and how you can uh, get close to them. All right. Sounds good, Phil. We'll talk next week. Take care. Thank you, Keith. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. Here are some job descriptions on the latest top jobs list from the Mass Hire Fall River Career Center. Delivery Specialist, Rent-A-Center, located at 933 Pleasant Street, is in need of a full-time delivery specialist, responsible for managing rental accounts and obtaining new rental orders over the phone and on the sales floor. Job number 1246864. Family Support Center Caseworker. 
Key Program Incorporated, located at 70 Front Street, is looking for a part-time Family Support Center caseworker to provide direct care services indicated by the client's treatment plan and facilitate client and family counseling, mediation, and support. Job number 12468110. Pastry Chef, Europa Pastries and Coffee Shop. Located at 65 Columbia Street is looking to hire a full-time pastry chef to create and prepare recipes for breads and desserts, order supplies, and hire staff. Job number 12468265. Arbor Counseling Services of Fall River, located at 1082 Dayball Street, is looking to fulfill the following full and part-time positions. In-home clinician, job number 12470638. Therapeutic training and support counselor, job number 12463878. H&R Block, located at 1321 South Main Street, is also looking to fulfill the following full and part-time positions. Tax professional, job number 12469378. Associate Team Leader, job number 12469331. For more information on these or other positions, visit MassHireJobQuest.detma.org or call the Mass Hire Fall River Career Center at 508-730-5000. Welcome back. The city is in the final stages of updating the water and drainage systems in the northern section of Eastern Avenue. Here's an update. Currently on the Crestbrook project, which is a drainage project, stretches from the bottom of Garden Street in Oak Grove Cemetery, all the way down through Bush Pond or Hebert Pond over next to Eastern Avenue. Then it included some drainage pipe that ran north on Eastern Avenue, up to the President Ave Rotary, and then out an outfall that was existing on the rotary. From there it crosses under Route 24, goes into our intercepted drain that's on the east side of, uh, of Route 24, and then is conveyed to the south with Tupper. So currently on the project, uh, most of the heavy construction is complete. We're finalizing some paving that needed to needs to be complete at the end of uh, Wingold Street and President Avenue. Then we'll be on to punch list projects, items throughout the project. So we're getting close to the end. The, like I said, major heavy construction is complete. Traffic detours for this project are mostly complete. We may have some small closures upcoming just to uh, finish up the items up. And the purpose is? So there was an, originally a stream that run, ran from a pig farm where Truesdale Clinic is at the intersection of Robeson and President Avenue. That stream ran all the way down Garden Street into what's now the Oak Grove Cemetery, ran through the cemetery all the way down and out to the North Watupa Pond as kind of Cecile Street. That area actually came from North Watupa was a large inlet that came way up that far. Over the years, through the development on the streets, building of houses, building up of the city, that stream was either taken and put into a pipe underground or put into swales. Uh, those swales and those pipes for the, when, it, when they were originally put in, was sized correctly probably for the impervious surface then. Over the past hundred years, as more houses have gone in, more roadways, more streets, the pipes are too small that are underground. The swales that were constructed were too small, so that's why we had to upgrade everything. We'll have more on the Crestbrook drainage project on our show next week, so please stay tuned. Parts of the city have been the focus of mosquito spraying over the past week. Even though that spraying is effective, Fall River's Health Department is advising residents to protect themselves against mosquito bites to avoid contracting potentially dangerous diseases. Tripoli is a, a rare but serious disease. So the last outbreak in Massachusetts occurred in 2010. Between 2010 and 2012, there were nine cases which resulted in four deaths. So it is a very serious disease that can result in death. In Massachusetts, about half of people who were identified with Tripoli 
did die. Others who do survive typically have permanent neurological damage. So it is important to protect ourselves. Symptoms are a high fever, a typically about 103 to 106 degrees, a stiff neck, headache, extreme lack of energy. The encephalitis component of the Triple E, Eastern Equine Encephalitis, is the brain swelling. That's the most frequent um, serious complication when somebody is identified with Triple E. Um, and that, you know, can have lasting devastating impacts for an individual that is able to survive. But like I said, right now Fall River is in that moderate level where we really just want to be mindful and be protecting ourselves wearing the right clothing, insect repellent, uh, fixing those screens, and then removing that standing water. And that will really um, go a long way in helping uh, protect our residents. There's a new individual to replace Julianne Kelly, who recently retired from her position at Fall River's Mass in Motion Healthy Living Program. Sarah Labossier is the new face of the nonprofit organization. FRC Media News had a chance to meet up with her at Government Center this week. Well, I was educated as a nurse. I have my RN and BSN, so I have that health and nutrition and fitness background for education. And then I took a few years to raise my kids at home, and then uh, I worked in the school system at Dartmouth Public Schools. Now, what attracted you to this position? Oh, I have multiple personal interests beyond the education in, in health and fitness and nutrition. And, and just, um, I love networking with people. I love sharing information. Now it's the end of the summer and Mass Emotion is all about healthy living. What would you suggest people do before the fall cool weather sets in? Oh, I think it's a great time to get outside with the uh, cooler weather coming and it's great to walk. It's great to explore your environment, um, take advantage of some of the paths, pathways, the Quickshin Rail Trail, the different opportunities that are available and um, get out in nature. The Bioreserve has many, many acres of natural land to explore right in, the, right in the city of Fall River, so that would be a great thing to do. We'll have more FRC Media News after this. Thank you for considering a homeless pet today. I hope you enjoy what you're about to see, and as always, please feel free to contact the shelter before coming down to make sure that the pets you're viewing are still available for adoption. We can be reached at 508-677-9154. Welcome to Hot Dogs and Cool Cats. Today we have Kiwi. Kiwi is a seven-year-old Siamese snowshoe. She's a sweet cat. She lo she's very friendly with people. She can be a little feisty with other cats at times. She does like her own space. And when other cats get in her space, she might give them a little squat, but nothing too drastic. Um, Kiwi may be a good lap cat once she's comfortable in her new environment. She can be a little shy at first, but she comes around rather quickly. If you'd like to visit with Kiwi, please come down to 300 Linwood Street in Fall River at Forever Paws. Today on Hot Dogs and Cool Cats, we have Cliff, Glenn, and Birch. Cliff, Glenn, and Birch came from a hoarding case of rats up in New York. They came with over 26 other rats. Most of all of them have gotten adopted except for these three. These three males are quite bonded. They love each other so much. They rely on each other for comfort, for security. Rats are very simple. They require rat pellets, um, fruits. They love pasta, they love apples, you name it, they love it. If you're interested in meeting these three boys who have been here for 133 days, please come on down. They would love to have a nice home. We are located at 300 Linwin Street in Fall River, Mass. At Forever Boss. Summer is winding down, but there's still activities ongoing at Fall, River, Fall River's Heritage State Park on the city's waterfront. Here's more. We have our friends at the New Bedford Symphony Orchestra coming to uh, perform five different concerts. Different members of the symphony will be coming here to perform at the park. Uh, the first one is today, the 17th. Uh, we have a tuba player here. And then on Saturday, we have not only the symphony orchestra, we also have Shakespeare in the Park with Measure for Mer Measure. That's uh, Measure for Measure is at 7.30, 5.30 is the symphony. Then the following Wednesday, we have the symphony here again, members of the symphony. 
Then we have, on the 21st, we have, oh, we have, just before of our movie, we have uh, Lauren Nelson and Kira Davis, both violin players here. And then on the 25th, they come back again. It's part of our free family fun day. August 25th, everybody mark your calendars from 12 to 4. We have a free family day, all kinds of activities for the family, kite making and face painting and, and uh, chalking, all kinds of good stuff. But we also have the symphony. And August 28th, we have the symphony back again. Two members of the symphony coming here to play from 6 to 7. Um, just before the free movie. So everybody's invited down. It's going to be a terrific time. And um, we're trying to bring some fun stuff here to Fall River. That's it for FRC Media News for this week. You can catch FRC Media News Thursdays and Fridays at 6 p.m. or online at our website at frcmedianews.org. For all of us here at FRC Media News, I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Thursday.